thing about the game design is that sometimes I decide to add a couple other components to the way the bonuses can throw work in here. And one of those ways is to include a ranking component to the game where I will show who just like the top list of students in a group. So I won't show the bottom students, um, but I will show the top. So like I don't want anybody to feel bad that they're all the way down in the rankings, but I will encourage students to push and work harder by competing and trying to stay at the top of the list. So they will have class rankings or topic rankings or even um, subject rankings. So these rankings are used also for bonuses. For example, if you're near the top of the rank, you may get extra help. Uh, you may be allowed to bring a cheat sheet during the test or you may be guaranteed an A in certain circumstances. Um, or you also might have more responsibility. I might actually rely on you more to act and help other students in the room. And so I use this ranking because it's also kind of like real life. We are social animals and we cannot deny that there's a lot of competition in life. And although my class is all about collaboration, working together and helping each other out, there has to be a little bit, if it's going to be a game, there has to be a little bit of that jolt for trying to be the best you can be compared to others. Now, that's not really going to determine how you succeed or not in the class or if you get an A or not. You know, everybody can get an A if they work hard, you know, but it's more uh, about simulating their real life component and motivating some kids which are driven to do that as well. So I try to motivate kids of all different kinds and some kids really thrive on that competition. And I'd also find that it makes the class kind of more fun when the game has that component as well. Likewise, sometimes I include groups in the game. So I'll pair you guys up with some random mastery groups and this is completely separate from like lab groups that we'll use here and there, you know, and those also tend to be randomly assigned from here and there or assigned uh, by, you know, level on the quiz, you know, so students who did well on the quiz can work together while students who struggle will work together. And I'll do that so that I can work with uh, differently with groups that need more or less help, right? I can push or enrich the ones that are already ready, help recover the ones which are not so much. Sometimes I'll create groups where we have a struggling student paired up with a more advanced student so they can all, one can help the other out and the advanced student can also help the one that's struggling and in that manner become even better at the topic. So I tend to create groups in a variety of different ways. But the other group that I'm talking about, this mastery group, is just a pack that competes in the game together. And I do this so that we can create a more accountability. So everybody that's part of that pack right, or part of that team must check in with everybody else to make sure that they're working as hard as they can. Because the better the team does, the more bonus all team members get. It's a way to create an extra layer of accountability and have buddies to actually push you through the game. So that's a little bit more about how I group things in class and how I use a little bit of competition and collaboration to jolt the motivation in the class.